everything we do for freedom, for expression, anything, on a personal level, right? That we do, we think we do that for ourselves, is also always relevant on a global level. And I think that's not even only relevant. I think that is actually what makes the wheel turn. Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Anna and this is my channel where I talk about tarot and all things related. So last time you wanted me to talk about how I work with the Living Altar Oracle. I have had a little more time with these cards, with this beautiful deck, so I can share something. And this is one of the ways, one of the things that I do. Simply put, it's one of the things that inspire me what to do. So just a little disclaimer, I'm mostly going to share my thoughts on a message that I remembered from um, the text in the guidebook, but it also shows you what an inspiring oracle deck can do. So I remember when I pulled the midnight card, beautiful midnight card. I remember when I pulled this card, it just struck a chord with me. It struck a chord. Well, first of all, it's a beautiful card. <laughs> and second of all, the text that came with it, I will quickly read it for you. It, it kind of felt like that message, I really needed to hear that message at that time. So, little recap. There is an infused spell in each of these cards. So they are not, it's not a regular oracle. It's really more like, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's already doing what it's supposed to do or what, it, what I think it claims to, to, uh, to incite in, in, in people. It's just to inspire people. It just inspired me to not do the spell because they're not that literal. Uh, you know, it's not like, take these ingredients and then say this out loud and then you'll get this. It's really, I will read it to you. What if my body is freedom? I make ceremony in exploring my holy vessel and altar. The rooting of my soul deeper into my bones is a sacred act of love. I am a temple of dust and ash. I chant the memories of every moment that has served to build this sanctuary. I rejoice in the reverberation as they sing a devotion to the ancestor I am becoming. I sink deeply into night's embrace. I receive the solace and sanctuary it provides. My magic is restored in the silence of the mystery daily. And then the guiding message is, turn inwards. Allow the magic and energy of what has transpired to nourish you. Take time to honor the ancestor you have become. So that last little part that I also talked about and read out loud in my latest live chat. Take time to honor the ancestor you have become. Was... <laughs> it's, it's really cool to me because it's taking this thing that many of us do on our ancestors, but then shine a light from the exact opposite side of, of it, of the thing. And so it brought me to, well, <laughs> we honor ancestors because that's mostly what we're talking about with this card. You know, it's, it's, you will see it in the Witch's Wheel uh, Living Altar Oracle video um, where I make the Witch's Wheel or the Wheel of the Year with these cards. Um, this is all in the dark, uh, well, color-wise, dark side of, uh, of the year. So it's, I think, winter, earth, uh, boundaries, midnight, new moon, so the dark moon. So, ancestors, I think, and, and around that time, before that time, but around that time, it's Samhain, and then there's the winter solstice, so yeah, it's all pretty dark. So what I was saying is that in our practice, we often talk about we honor ancestors, right? This is what this card is about, and this section of the wheel, you could say, is mostly about we honor ancestors. But when we say that, we honor our ancestors, we honor ourselves at the same time right? First of all, just because, well, we came from them, you know, we are a bit like them, whoever they are, whoever they are for you. I mean, we can honor um, family members who have passed, 
you know, blood relatives, but it doesn't have to be that. It can also be just a, a different type of connection. What I'm saying is that whatever ancestor practice we have, this is a great way, in case you hadn't thought of it or have never tried it, it's, I think it's really cool to incorporate this as well because we honor ancestors, but we honor ourselves at the same time because, well, sure, of course, we are a bit like them, but also we are an ancestor to someone. So this message, this whole thing that I'm going to talk about, it can be for you as well, to brighten your day or to energize yourself and your practice. You know, maybe like me, this is, this is just something that you need to hear. <laughs> the realization, but really, because I sat with it, with this idea, honor the ancestor that you have become. I sat with it, I even went through old notes. <laughs> the realization that I am an ancestor to someone, maybe not my blood, maybe not even by name, as in this person might not know me personally, might not even know of me, that's very possible, might not even know that I exist, but what I am doing here it connects us. So honoring in this case for me is to take a real moment to reflect and allow myself to be proud of myself, for instance. Proud of myself and my achievements. That first thing is something that takes an effort, but it's worth it. I allow myself to be proud of myself, proud of my achievements. I also allow myself to be, to really feel, because I am thankful, but to really feel it. That is something, you know, gratitude, being thankful, something that uh, puts us, that brings us back into, I don't know, the moment or something like that. It brings us back into making memories of um, feeling and remembering the moment that we are in. So for me, because I am someone who has a past of just ignoring and not just, I could even say actively not remembering, purposely, purposefully not m remembering some moments in life that aren't even, you know, particularly bad or something, but uh, it's like, well, now it's just such a shame because I live, I didn't live it fully and now I don't really, I don't really have a good memory. <laughs> I don't really know how to explain it and maybe I just also don't really feel like getting into it. But thankfulness in that way, but also I allow myself to be thankful for the chances that were given me. So first there is proud of myself, my achievements, which I think we are talking about the present moment. And then we're looking a little bit more at the past, like how did I get here? The chances that were given to me and that were fought for so hard by the people in my direct environment and, you know, of course, the people that came before that. So I would say that's about the past. And then it also automatically opens up the future. I allow myself to be excited about the future. It's still wide open. It became this whole web of making connections that are, in this case, in my opinion, very obvious. But when you look up the origin of the word ancestor, you get before and go. So it says to go before and to go, which implies, of course, this is where this plant or this animal or this person came from. But it's still going. It's still growing, it's still evolving, it's still changing, it's still adapting and will undoubtedly one day become something the beginning never would have or, or could have imagined. And in Dutch the word for ancestor is voorouder, which um, the literal translation of that word is pre 
parent or pre-elder. And then thinking that brought me to um, the fact that these literal translations remind me so much of the Dutch word for example, which is um, voorbeeld, and the literal translation of that is pre-image. I think that's really cool. So, ah, the power of words. They can be confusing, but they can be enlightening as well. Pre-image is, of course, not about copying. Pre-image is about creating something new, creating something personal, creating something else, creating something that you can basically call your own from the things that were handed to you. Really reminded me of, um, in particular, the Rider Waite Smith um, Seven and Eight of Pentacles. Because, of course, there are different ways of, of reading any card, but I often see in the Seven of Pentacles this idea of, okay, well, these are the things that are handed to me. What am I going to do with it? Am I going to continue this tradition? Am I going to continue the way that things have been done? But then, in the Eight, this person has made the decision to um, not follow a routine, even though it may look like it, but actually to create something else, create something new, do something creative, do something that is meaningful to them, and uh, perfect their craft. And by doing so, also enrich their own lives. And um, enrich is not the right word. Just, I don't know, just expand on what they do and what they can do and what they can contribute to the world. You know, it changes the, the meaning of the thing that they do on a daily basis. It therefore it changes, the, it changes the meaning of life. And I read a book years ago, but I always remembered this, that the book said, when we're talking about meaning of life, we are actually talking about the purpose of life. What can we give it? What can we contribute? What can we give? So you see, in my mind, this might be a result of pre-image. And this is you becoming the pre-image. <laughs> okay, so we may carve our own path. But it's really unrealistic and unfair even to expect, um, for instance, year 3000 thinking in 2020. We must admit, we human beings are very limited in this, even though we may indeed be ahead of our time, right? Obviously this limitation is some sort of protection as well, but we do evolve, which can only mean we do need to break rules. We do need to break tradition to shock, undoubtedly. And then I also think that shock can be just simply a result of you doing whatever the hell you want to do, or it can um, be a tool to actually make this pre-image uh, attain more people, if you know what I mean. So we do evolve, we break tradition, because sometimes we do have these ideas and these desires and these passions that we want to take further and we want to take further in time and I think that we do without some of us paving paths that nobody could ever dream of at one point in time there would be no progress there would be no forward thinking side of history everything we do for freedom, for expression, anything, on a personal level, right? That we do, we think we do that for ourselves, is also always relevant on a global level. And I think that's not even only relevant. I think that is actually what makes the wheel turn. That is what progress is. I think we need more pre-images just to prove possibility and options to the world. So why am I saying that? Perhaps we could take up a little bit more space. Perhaps we need to be a bit less scared of the life we truly want. 
perhaps we could be a little bit more bold. So I'm not saying that we are not doing exactly what we want. I'm not saying that we are not good examples. I'm not saying that we are scared. I'm just saying that um, this focus, it rings so true and, and you see we're not there yet that this is a given. I realize that I am very lucky in that I'm at this point right now. I'm very lucky. And I cannot only thank myself, right? As I said, I'm thankful for the chances that were given to me. I'm thankful for living here, for instance. But also, I don't deny that I made that happen, that I felt this something that I know um, people who are watching this right now can connect with, connect to, um, I felt something that needed to be expressed and it would be difficult to express that in, for instance, in where I grew up, in the place where I grew up. So I needed to take myself and my dark, unsaved soul the way I like it and I needed to find a place where I could have it wild and free and, <laughs> you know, where I could just be myself. Because little side note, I think, just being yourself isn't that simple. I think it's not really a state of being at all. I think it is uh, making yourself happen or <laughs> doing yourself. No, wait, <laughs> that's not what I'm talking about. But you know, it's just, it's not a state of... <laughs> It's not a state of being at all. It's a state of... It's active. I am... <laughs> I am actively... Myself. Does that make sense? So I'm obviously saying we in this video. Just because I think that more people... That people will relate. But obviously I am... I am just talking about these things from my own perspective. I think that I do... I could... Uh, put the emphasis on on all of this a bit more and not just think of it every so often forget about them halfway through because life happens like no you know you want to be a little bit I think I want to be a little bit more aware of the fact that I may very well be carving a path and be a pre-image to someone out there you know so you see there's my example with the midnight card. And this is all what it made me think about and what it inspired me to do. What I'm going to do is simple yet powerful. So what I do is I set goals in what I would like to achieve. However bold, write them down. I think of what that would look like to someone else in the world at this point in time or later on. In what way would this inspire? I make those into something that I send out as a kind of uh, a promise to myself, but not only to myself, and as a, a voice, perhaps, that, that might be heard. So I write them all down and I burn them while visualizing. With all this ancestor talk, I decided to pull an extra card um, next to the midnight. I may not know your names, but I can trace your faces through the lines of my own. You are not my blood, but I feel your love and the blessings I receive through the sacrifice of your fight. I do not need to call to you, for your song is always present in the harmony of my breath. Our power is a lattice of choices, heartbreak, devotion. Every movement forward unfolds the prayers and unpacks the stories whose weaving began so many lifetimes ago. Where am I in the order of things? What is my place and purpose, my offering? What will end with me, begin with me, be fortified through me and passed to the altars of those for whom I lead the way? All right, and this is actually air of water. Wow. So the king or the prince of cups. 
what wisdom is alchemizing within you? I think that um, all of this, you being your own ancestor and you being a radical witch, which, which is one of the things that uh, I just quoted from this booklet, is very much in this deck, which is why I'm constantly getting these vibes. I don't mind. I kind of love it. Uh, okay. Take a better look at it. Can you see this? I just put the box like this so that it could be a little mini altar on here. Here I'm writing down my intentions. Uh, there are a lot of little ones. This is something that I've picked up from, well, chaos magic, um, but also altered it a little bit. Is, you know, for instance, um, this is similar to when you want to make a sigil. Okay, I talked about this in the live chat as well. Uh, Peter J. Carroll, right? I said he's old school. I'm sorry about that. He's not. Uh, at least not in most of the things that he, he wrote and, and believes. Especially in comparison to the other books I read uh, at the moment. But, for instance, he... I think it, this was in Liber Null. Um, Liber Liber? I always said Liber. Liber Null. Uh, he explains how to make a sigil, and then the example he gives is you write it down as the the thing that you ask for, so it's kind of like the wish. But I like to write things down like they are so. So instead of, for instance, saying, um, I want to be courageous, that's not what you write down. You write down... I have courage, or I am courageous, so kind of like it is so, and to me that is that sounds more powerful at least, and many of um, these little messages that I write down today are already so um, so it's not only about goals that I want to achieve, it's also things that I feel I already have and you know you can go as deeply as deep or as what's the opposite shallow <laughs> that sounds sounds bad but you know what I mean as you want because this is your thing this is your own little it's whatever you want it to be but as I said I set these goals, or things that I want to achieve, and at the same time I think of what that would look like to someone else. So, what is truly important? I think that is where we are going with this. These are really just, I think these are really just my version of um, positive affirmations, because I don't know if I should say what I want to say. I kind of want to say in most of those computer art with all the flowers and all the butterflies and all the little stars, oracle decks, you know, the shiny paper and all that stuff. There are these positive affirmations that sometimes we need. Okay, let's just be honest. Sometimes we need to hear. Just like in this deck, it's also kind of like that. But there's just this thing inside of me. I cannot help but to feel the tackiness. And when I'm doing it myself, I'm allowing the tackiness to be there because it's just for me. If there is any tackiness at all, I mean, probably, right? But also I can limit the tackiness to something that is at least comfortable to me, acceptable to me. <laughs> Basically what I'm saying is, some of these are things that you might find, probably, I mean, I don't really know, I don't own the, those types of decks, that you might find in one of those decks that I this poorly described, 
but um, some of them are also very, at least I feel, personal. So I always like to write things down before um, I visualize them so that it's really a bit more step by step. What we do has an effect on the world, on our surroundings, we know that. We may not always see it from up close, but, but the energy, the intent is, is out there, is sent out there, it's out there. And this is powerful, I think, also because it turns you into the inspiration that inspires you. <laughs> I think it's great to acknowledge our pre-images, but realize that us too are pre-images for someone, to someone, for a new age or for however large or small, for a revolution. Are we in the middle of a revolution? I think we could be much more. <laughs> okay, hope you enjoyed this. Make yourself some tea like I did. All right. Thank you all so much for being here. I will see you all in the next one. Bye.